Hello, welcome to Women's Seeking Wholeness, episode 192. Four techniques or steps to repatterning your brain when those really uncomfortable, difficult, negative patterns start surfacing like procrastination, avoidance, quitting, fear, all of those things. Our expert today is Adele Spragan. She's a thought leader, an international speaker, and an award-winning author of the book, Shift, Four Steps to Personal Empowerment. A lot of the personal and professional modalities and methodologies she was following did not work for her. And as a result, she has created her own proprietary four-step repatterning technique, which she's gonna walk us through. See, our brains are making decisions on our behalf all the time based on some previously laid down patterns and underlying pathways that have been created in our brain and not just our brain, our whole body. But we're going to talk some neuroscience. We're going to talk about waking patterns up because basically we are just a collection of patterns. We are walking patterns, a collection of pathways that have been laid down. And so when we awake to this, take back our power, we can actually do a lot of really powerful reprogramming. I know I said the word pattern 5,000 times just in this intro. But really when it comes down to it, I think just the positive part of this is that we are not our patterns. We are spiritual beings that are experiencing patterns. So we don't want to over identify with what we've inherited. So there's a lot of power in this, I think, intergenerationally and personally uh, and culturally. So without any further ado, let's bring on Adele Spragan. Well, Adele from Canada, here we are. I'm glad that we could connect. I know we had scheduled something and either I had to cancel or you did or something, but I always trust that it aligns when it's supposed to align. Yes. So thank you for your presence today. Oh, thank you, Sherry. Happy to be here. Well, let's talk about, let's just dive in. I mean, I, I've been talking with my audience about emotional patterns and how really we're just walking patterns. I mean, we're more than that, but like, even at the like quantum level, we are like sacred geometry and we can get disruptions in our patterns and we're all, we all have energy feels like there's a lot going on that all really comes down to patterns, energy grids, um, energy wheels, it's all patterns, right? Yeah. So the brain tries to make sense of this through forming its own patterns. <laughs> That's Just right. so we can survive, right? <laughs> That's right. Our brain is a pattern maker. That's what I like to call it. It, <laughs> it creates patterns and it operates by way of patterns. Yeah. So we can't be without them. So would you call yourself a little more left brain than right? Or are you kind of in the middle or where would you put yourself? Um, Whole brain at this point. A whole brain. So That's at great. this point, I, I use both sides of my brain. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, you? Well, um, I think I'm in the middle now, but it's really easy for me to flip into my left brain. And Mm -hmm. that's why I just like science and patterns. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know patterns are visual on the right side too, but like when we just get right down to, I just love to get to the heart of like, what is creating this? And so I can get too analytical. So then I'm like, oh no, I need to see the whole picture and take the bird's eye view. Right. Yes. (laughs) So So your book is called Shift, Four Steps to Personal Empowerment, but you also teach a four-step repatterning technique. So let's just dive into that. Um, So if you, yeah, whatever you want to share with each of those steps and just maybe a little snippet or or a practical on each one that you've found has been helpful for those you've worked with to kind of work through those steps to repattern. Sure. So let me first... um give my definition of a pattern because there's lots of them out there as you so brilliantly said like there's energy patterns and there's this pattern and that pattern Mm -hmm. but when we look at a pattern in our brain the easiest way to identify it is it's a three-part intertwining of physical sensation emotion and thought so when the three aspects of our being come together it results in a particular action that we take or a behavior that we adopt or a belief that we hold so our brain is is constantly creating these three part intertwinings, and each time it does, it it is a pattern. Okay, so the mm-hmm. definition of pattern is a physical sensation, emotion, thought. So the first thing that we have to do when we're faced with a problem. So most of us face problems in life, and whenever we encounter a problem, we tend to think, "Oh, what is here in the situation that is creating the problem." 
Or we'll ask ourselves, oh, you know, who's to blame here? Is it that person or me? <laughs> it's just a protective mechanism, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Or we'll, we'll say, oh, gosh, I'm, I'm wrong. I failed. I made a mistake, right? That created the problem. Mm. But none of that is how we're going to address problems. As, as a pattern maker, our brain being a pattern maker, what we really need to ask is, Okay, what pattern is resulting in me looking at the situation as a problem? What pattern is not taking an action which is working for me? So we we flip the switch and instead of thinking that the problem is out there or in other people or even in ourselves, mm. we say okay, the pattern the problem originates in the pattern itself and then we identify it. So that is step 1. What is my physical sensation, emotion, thought when faced with this particular problem? Okay. I like that because you're like not identifying with it. You're That's kind it. of creating some space between yourself and the pattern. Like you aren't your patterns. That's it. Exactly. You are not your patterns. Mm -hmm. You are the creator of patterns. And that mm -hmm. I keep stressing over and over again. Right. Of it. Okay. So that's step one. And then step two is we're going to flip that switch. So. Let me, let's just look at our brain, shall we? <laughs> I'm going to peek under the hood because here it is locked inside this dark, silent room of a skull. And it has no access to the outside world. So inside the skull, there is no taste. There is no sound. There is no um, smell. There is nothing in there other than electrical impulses, which were moving down these neural pathways. Okay, mm -hmm. good. So what does that tell us? Well, it tells us that everything that we believe we are actually experiencing in the outside world is actually a translation given by our patterns in our brain. So our brain... Hey, wait, say that again. My yeah. brain is literally trying to... <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll, I'll <laughs> say it again. Everything that we believe is actually happening in the outside world. So you and I think that we're on a podcast, and we are. We're talking to each other. Okay, you're listening to my words. You're listening to my voice. But in order for you to know that we are on a podcast, your brain first has to interpret all of that sensory data that is coming in through the senses. Mm. Get it? So yes. it takes the visual. It sees me here. It it takes the what it's hearing. It takes what it already knows about podcasting, and it goes, oh, yeah, I'm on a podcast. <laughs> and it's actually <laughs> interpreting all of that information inside what we already know. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Hopefully that or all makes sense. Okay, great. So w in step two, we have to flip the switch because we're only seeing, we're not seeing the whole picture. We're seeing through the perspective of that pattern. Mm, okay. Okay. And so how we flip the switch is we own it. That's my pattern. So even though to me, it seems like I know everything about this problem, right? Mm -hmm. I know how to solve it. I know what it is, or I don't know. That's also a form of knowing. Uh, when we know how, that our brain is locked inside this dark, silent room, we have to say, okay, I have a pattern that believes it doesn't know. So we right. get to own it. We say, I created that. That's my pattern. That's my creation. That is not necessarily the full picture. So is this just kind of like self-accountability of just looking at like, I created this situation? Or you didn't is it create deeper? the situation. Well, I mean, yeah. okay, your brain, you, you didn't create the situation, but you made meaning from it. You interpreted it a certain way. You which interpreted it a certain way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yes, exactly. So that second step, we take uh, ownership. I don't want to say responsibility because that sounds a little... Yeah, lame. that's heavy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's heavy. But we take ownership of the panel. We just say, mm -hmm. okay, yeah, this situation is occurring, but... I know that this situation, I'm interpreting this situation through a pattern and I can own that pattern. Yeah. I love what you're saying so far with these first two steps, because you're kind of taking a step back and being the observer, which Absolutely. kind of takes you out of that reactionary, which is another pattern. Right? Yeah. Um, yeah. So I love, you can create an observer pattern. Yeah. That's right. Just exactly. look and watch and see and notice what's happening. Exactly. I like to say, be the fly on the mind's wall. 
<laughs> the fly can't judge. The fly doesn't know what's going on. It can just observe. It's just watching, mm. and it's not making any judgment. That's how I like us to be. And and when we think we are the only animal on the planet that has a frontal lobe that is able to do that, we're able to step back from ourselves and just observe observe ourselves. Mm-hmm. And that's a really powerful ability and and something that really can make transformational shifts when we do it correctly. Yeah, it's, it's just lining up. critical mind that comes yeah. in that keeps us stuck, yeah. right? And that we just beat ourselves up and we just suffer in that, but really we can't change anything. Whereas that observer role, as you're saying, hugely powerful. Yeah, and more neutral, right? Just it is what it is. It's not a judgment on it. It's just, yeah. hey, this is what I'm seeing. That's that's a very that's a very great goal. Goal's not the right word. Um, it's a practice of the life of a lifetime to get to that space where you're able to observe without judgment because we've yeah. been so programmed to judge our thoughts and yeah. yeah. Okay. So programmed into oh, but- am I right? Am I wrong? But when we start yeah. to work with patterns, here's a really powerful question. Ready? Mm. Does it work? And it has to work for everybody. See, if we can step back from, am I right? Am I wrong? Are they right? Are they wrong? Is this situation right? Is this situation wrong? And just simply ask the question, is this working for everybody? Mm -hmm. And if it isn't, then we're going to have a powerful four-step technique that you can remove the pattern, not solve it, just remove it. We're just going to subtract it from the brain. Mm -hmm. And now the brain will do what the brain does, which is create a new pattern. And that pattern, again, will ask the question, does this one work? And typically it works a lot better. And I'll explain why. (laughs) No, I love that. It reminds me of the work of like Byron Katie and people who are talking about like, how's that working for you? You know? Yes. And it's like, well, it's kept me, it's gotten me to survive to this point, Mm -hmm. but but now I've got this wall and this barrier and no, it's not working. Right. No, I'm suffering or no, I'm causing conflict or no, I'm not getting to my goals. And any one of those three is it's not working. It's yeah. not working. No judgment. So how do you just know? It's not working. So how would your body be convinced that it is working? Oh, well, okay. So. Um, so I'm going to pause at step two, guys. Yeah, we'll get yeah, step yeah. three yeah, and four. I just have this question of like, <laughs> because I just talked question. to somebody about, I just did an interview before you that will air sooner than yours, about having embodied wisdom where you just kind of know, mm-hmm. and it's like knowledge and experience together. And it's like, it kind of supersedes thought and even what we're talking about, like in the brain. So we have to train the brain to trust the body sometimes. And so that's why I asked you, like, how how, do you have something you measure where there's readiness for the brain to be like, oh, okay, I'm I'm good. Um, So let me just back up and and I think I'll answer your question this way because I think it might make more sense. So the human brain, unlike other animals, is not born knowing what to do. As human beings, we enter this planet and we have to very, very quickly create patterns. And so from the moment somebody's born, every situation, new situation that the brain encounters, the brain takes that action that 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 is happening at that time and stores it away for future use. Mm -hmm. And it stores it away inside a pattern, a neural pathway in the brain. And it says, okay, once it has that pattern for Mm. that situation, it goes, great, I don't need to create another pattern the next time we encounter this situation, I'm just going to pull on this one. You want to know why you're making the same mistake over and over and over again, even though you know it, you shouldn't do it. (laughs) Most people will say that, I know better, but I just keep doing it. That's because there's a pattern in your brain that keeps taking that action repeatedly. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, When, by the time we reach adulthood, throughout all of childhood, our brain is massively creating patterns because it doesn't have any. It's it's not because as an adult, you can't create patterns anymore. You can, absolutely. It's just that as a child, you are encountering new situations all the time. So your brain's storing up all of these patterns really quickly. By the time we hit a uh, 25, 27, the brain patterning starts slowing down. 
okay, mm-hmm. into adulthood it starts slowing down, and then it really it, it slows down quite a bit, only because it thinks, oh, I have a pattern for everything now. <laughs> I'm sad. Me. I'm good. <laughs> I'm sad. I'm good. Right, and not unless you encounter a brand new situation, which you will sometimes. Will your pattern have to make a correction? Will your brain have to make a correction and add a new pattern? Hmm. Sometimes that happens spontaneously. Uh, And those moments of body wisdom that you just explained, that's a sign that spontaneously your pattern has upgraded. Oh, I love it. I just got chills just now. Oh, good. Did I just get an upgrade? Awesome. You you might have. Because those (laughs) insightful, oh my gosh, that came as such a surprise. That is your brain now having, boom, it just created a new pattern. Oh, I love it. Okay, good. Awesome. So how are we going to make that happen systematically rather than spontaneously? Mm -hmm. Your brain's doing this spontaneously all the time. But is there a way that we can train it to do it systematically? So every time we encounter an action that we're taking that is not working for us, that we actually have a technique that we can use to cause our brain to do that. And the answer is yes. That's where those four steps come in. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, and in a way you could say, okay, I'm programming my brain to repattern itself. I'm going to program it to upgrade those patterns every time I need it to, rather than Mm. just waiting for the situation to have it happen. And I was just thinking as I'm listening to you talk, like it would be super powerful to acknowledge, oh, I just had a somatic sensation. Like I told you, I just got chills. Sometimes my like my crown chakra will tingle when I Mm -hmm. happen upon something that's a truth or or, you know, it's to take notice, really, my soul's like, take notice of this. And so what if what if I just acknowledge like, oh, hey, brain, lock that in, right? Remember this, this is our new pattern. I just had that thought like that would be really cool to do as a practice. When you are having those embodied times of knowing um, to just keep to continue to reinforce the new neural pathway creation. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, the first time you have an insight like that, um, it may be just, uh, I mean, everybody's seen those pictures of the brain where you you watch a neural pathway tease apart and then snap into new channels. Has everybody seen that? Okay, great. That's your brain's plasticity. That's your brain changing its patterning. Okay. Mm -hmm. We want to do that consistently, as you're saying, Sherry, right? Now, sometimes... When you have an insight like that, the brain has rewired, but it's still, as you're saying, um, delicate, right? It's not hardwired in yet. It's still new. Mm -hmm. And so doing little things like that can support it, okay? Um, But eventually, when you've repatterned that situation enough, then boom, your brain just, it's locked in now to that new pattern, that new behavior. And if it works, keep it right? If it works for everybody, great. Your brain is already going to hold on to it. Nice. Okay. So, I love that intelligence that's happening for you. It's like you're unawares, right? Like we're not always conscious that the intelligence is, is working for us. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Our brain, uh, you know, uh, what do we know now about the human brain that we didn't know 20 years ago? Tons, because modern brain scanners are now able to peek inside the hood without opening the hood, whereas mm-hmm. before, the only way to really know what was going on was invasive. And now it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? So that's why we're learning all this stuff about the human brain, and that's why there's so much emphasis today on neuroscience that wasn't there. 10, 15 years ago. Um, And what neuroscience is showing us is so remarkable. It's like there's a miracle happening inside our own heads that we're not even aware of. And when we know how to work this brain, I'm excited to see where the future of this planet will go. Yeah. Yeah. Or I think even just people becoming more conscious that let like, they, they have the ability to sort of be the master and commander of their brain yeah. or to reprogram that, yeah. that, I mean, a lot of people are talking about this now. And I, and I went to, a um, I don't know, you're probably familiar with Dr. Joe Dispenza's work. Um, mm-hmm. he does a lot of stuff on reprogramming in neuroscience, but I mean, 
people were kind of talking, but it's only been the last, I would say three to five years where this is really coming out. It's yes. just almost like the consciousness is ready in a space of readiness to just clear out all these old patterns, whether they're ancestral, because we can, and, and I was going to ask you about your thoughts on inheriting these patterns. So sometimes, like you said, I get what you're saying about like, we're born and our brain is kind of like, we have to be told what to do, but we still inherit patterns, right? Uh, through epigenetics, um, inherit, epigenetic yeah, that's inheritance. A, that's a really great question. Um, I like to say it this way. Everybody's born with a, a certain um, bent. Okay, so let me just explain. In my family, you can see anxiety runs through my family. Okay. So you can see it in the children. It's just a, a slightly enhanced level of anxiety than what you would see in a different family. Okay, so that's an inherited, you could say that's an inherited pattern. But even if you inherit something like that, you're not necessarily have to be stuck with it because there's um, a lot that you can do to program the brain so that you can, a, a lot of it is nurture, right? A lot of it mm. is you reprogramming the brain so that you don't have to accept that level of anxiety. Right. right? So, right. I, but we just can come into this space without any environmental influence and still hold an ancestral pattern that hasn't been healed or aligned intergenerationally. And yeah, and perhaps. Yeah. Yeah. It's there's a really interesting field of study with intergenerational epigenetic trauma. And um it's it's really fascinating, this whole and you talked about neuroplasticity. So I am totally in alignment with that. We get we're not victims of our inheritance. Yeah. We get to um the like the pattern might be there, but it doesn't have to express. Like we might and, hold and it, but we don't or we might hold that, let's just say the DNA sequencing or the genetic, you know, aberration, <laughs> but we don't, we don't have to let it express. We might have the traits of something, but it doesn't need to be our reality. Yes. Um, yeah. And I think people and, are, that's, that's an empowering thought. And we can go even more powerful, Sherry, because, um, when you have, a, let's say, that ancestral pattern that you've inherited, okay, you will feel it as your pattern. And that's beautiful, because at that point, you can say, okay, I own that. So you don't have to worry about where it came from, from the past life, right? It can be, okay, it's here now. It's arising right. in my space now, and I get to deal with it. And so I like to say, you know, with repatterning, we can actually heal seven generations forward and seven generations back. Yeah, yeah. I because love that. We get to be the, the central pillar inside all of that generational space. Mm -hmm. And that's awesome when we can own it at that level. And by stepping back and observing rather than judging, we can do that. That's, you know, if we have to figure it out and judge it and yeah. make sure it's right, then it's very difficult. But when you're the surrendered witness, it's actually a lot easier. Mm -hmm. now, easy. Surrendered witness. That's such a beautiful feminine yes. um, t phrase to just let that be. Okay. So I think we left off on step, step three. Two. That's right. So we're, we're step going three. into step three. Okay. So step three is to be that surrendered witness, exactly as you're saying. You are just going to witness how this pattern is arising in the body. Uh, rather than judging it and no need to change it. Okay. This isn't the conscious mind is actually the dumb cousin to the unconscious. <laughs> Frankly, mm -hmm. I like to call it like that. It's only seeing part of the picture. It doesn't see the whole picture. Um, the other way that I often word this is our right hemisphere of the brain, which is the embodied hemisphere. So that's the hemisphere that tells you that this is your body. This is your hand. It is mm -hmm. access to the body. That has a lot more wisdom than the mind wisdom, which is very left brain, which is always just partially trying to analyze everything and put everything together, as you said. Now, that doesn't mean the mind wisdom isn't equally valuable to body wisdom. Please don't misunderstand. They're just two very different wisdoms, mm -hmm. and each has its space, each has its place, each has its, um, its, its assets and its benefits. And so in the, when we, do step three, we just become that surrendered witness, and then we allow the subconscious to do all the work for us. 
So that is step three. And that can be difficult for some people to understand exactly what I just said. All of the uh, instructions are in my book, and you can also get them on my website. So it may sound a little more tricky than it actually is Mm -hmm. when you just follow the instructions, especially when I have a guided instruction and you just listen to my guidance. It's actually okay. You'll you'll get it. It's not a problem. Yeah, and don't you feel like people have to establish that safety first before they're ready to release? Absolutely. Sometimes having a guide take you through that and hold space for you and guide you through it is really powerful. Um, and as I'm listening to you talk about that too, I just think about, um, you know, when we're in that surrendered space, we're more open Mm -hmm. and then you can get a lot more intuitive, but it also reminds me of the word allowing. Yes. Just allowing the process to just unfold. And you're again, you're just like, okay, here it is. Yes. Um, I had a very powerful somatic release from a memory in childhood I had suppressed probably about three weeks ago. Mm-hmm. And that's what was going on intuitively. And I I was very emotional and having a, a big body release. But I found that there was a part of me that was being that witness, like the adult me maybe, mm-hmm. or my in my soul space, just kind of witnessing it and watching it and just being like, it's okay just let it go or just, yeah. just keep crying, keep, you know, doubling over whatever you need to do. Like I'm here and I see you and I validate you. And, it, yes. and that's, that's a huge piece of it is that safety to yeah. just allow it to come out. Yeah, absolutely. That, that frontal lobe able to just watch as the, as the back of our brain does what it needs to do to heal. And that frontal lobe just holding that space of, yeah, of safety, of trust, of it'll be okay. You'll get through it. Right? Mm-hmm. That's very much what happens in that third step. And and as you say, some of those shifts that can occur can be, wow, right? Like really, really dramatic and very surprising. Mm-hmm. And when those happen, you know you've hit on a really deep pattern that is now gone. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, And it's funny because as I was releasing it, I'm like, I've been suppressing and repressing this for so long. It took more energy to keep pushing. Well, I mean, and I wasn't even aware that I was pushing it, but Mm -hmm. my body's intelligence knew that I was in a space of readiness to, to really let it go. And had I been like, Oh my gosh, this is going to be so scary. I really wasn't in that space. I was just like, okay, let's go. Yeah. You know, and that, and that's, I thought it would be scarier than it actually was. Yes. Yes. And then afterwards, there's so much freedom, right? Like there's so right. much. Oh, I, I, I call it stepping out of one identity into another. That's how I describe it. Like you're in this identity where you're fighting this or fighting yourself or, you know, and mm-hmm. then you have a shift like that and you just step into another identity where, oh, wow. That's just gone. That is like somebody just took it and just brushed it off your shoulders. Yeah. That's how it feels. Yeah. Mm, yeah. yeah. It's a, it's a nice, it's a nice unburdening. And Absolutely. I did feel lighter and have yeah. felt lighter since that release. Yes. Awesome. And then I always like to say, though, the real proof is on the court. The real proof is in your life when you're just taking new actions, behaving differently, believing differently. Um, that's when you actually know, okay, that pattern is now removed and upgraded. Mm, Love it. Yes. Okay, fourth step. Fourth step. Okay, that's where we're going to create a new pattern. And that is all, um, it's all given by trust, really, because inside the four steps, you cannot actually know if anything has been achieved. As I just Mm. said, you have to judge it in your life. You have to judge it when the next time you're in the situation and you just behave differently. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'll give you an example. I just got off the phone with one of my clients and, um, they were on a, a, a rafting trip down a river and they got, um, caught at nighttime. So they're on the river and the sun sets <laughs> and it's now pitch black, no moon, nothing. Mm. And before they realized, oh my gosh, I would have been super anxious in this situation. like panicked and worried and analyzing and trying to figure out everything out. And now they noticed there was just this calm, you'll be okay. Like mm. we'll find our way and it'll be fine. 
the people who knew how to repent and were all reacting like that, calm, it's fine, it's okay, we're just going to keep paddling. The people who didn't have the repatterning technique, they were all panicking and, mm -hmm. right? Oh my gosh, how do we get off this river? And what's going to happen? And all of that stuff. And that's the difference. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So it, you can kind of measure it by the level of reactivity when you're in you a definitely. compromised situation. Definitely. Anything so, that before would have triggered stress, anxiety, conflict, all of that melts away when you're, when you know, and that's how you know you've repatterned. And when your solutions are there, I mean, you mentioned that before, like, you know, that body awareness of just, no, I know what to do. I know mm -hmm. how to do this. So that's the sign of an upgraded brand new pattern. So in step four, okay. we're going to trust, but we always judge on the court. Okay. So maybe just in a little nutshell, if possible, because I know this is a huge topic. It's huge. Like, how do you create a new pattern? It's those four steps that we walked through. It's the right? four steps that are going to create a new pattern for you. That's that's all you need to do is apply those four steps correctly. Uh -huh. And um, I always guarantee, actually, that you will. If you apply those four steps correctly, you will absolutely shift any area of your life that is not working for you because it's yeah. just working at the deep level of the brain. I can see that. And part of me also wants to add mind-heart coherence to kind of seal it in. Um, that's one of the things Dr. Joe Dispenza, when I went to his event in Mexico, he really was like, you know, the brain, the heart sends a lot of messages to the brain all the time. And mm -hmm. sometimes the brain responds and sometimes the brain doesn't. But having that, like, as I'm listening to it, it's, it's like, oh, I love this. And if I'm going to hold that creation, if I'm going to hold that new pattern, I need to engage my heart and believe or trust or like what you're saying, like, like all of those are very much heart based, even the surrender piece. It's, it's, it's very heart based. So I would just add that because in my mind, I'm super visual. So I'm looking at patterns in my brain and I'm like, Oh, and then this beautiful heart that knows, you know, how to love and how to have compassion. Like it, it wants to be aligned with whatever the brain is trying to create as well. They want to be yeah. playing together. Yeah. Um, it's interesting, Sherry, because we live in a world that, that um, we live in a very left brain world. Our culture out there is extremely left hemisphere. Um, and the left hemisphere knows a lot. That's where mind wisdom is, and it, it constantly knows. But in, the, in a whole brain experience, wisdom, compassion, trust is innate. Mm. It's not something we need to strive to get to. It's there in, in the underlayers right. of the brain, and it's just there. You know, I often, mm. as coaches, I sometimes hear the coach saying, oh, oh I'm really struggling with uh, compassion fatigue. And I I struggle to understand even what that means. It's like, well, wait a minute. When I don't feel compassion, I know it's a pattern that I just have to remove. It's Compassion isn't something I have to find. Do you see the difference? Right. You just have so, to access where, like, it's already in you. you it's know, there. Out. Yeah. It's there. It's yeah. there, and it's just the foundation. And all I have to do is remove what's preventing me from getting to that foundation. Mm. And I think that's the difference, right? That it, it's, it, I use a method of subtraction, not addition. I like to subtract what is between you, uh, between the person and wisdom, compassion, trust, rather than trying to strive to get to wisdom, compassion. Ooh, trust. I love that. That's yeah. so beautiful. It's funny because the name of my podcast, Women Seeking Wholeness, I'm actually changing the name, having almost four years into podcasting, oh. because I'm like, we don't have to seek for wholeness. We are yeah. wholeness. You are whole. Yeah. And there's no seeking anymore. Like found, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, yeah. safe. So, uh, well, this is really good stuff. So what's so it going to be? I'm curious. I'm Will not I'm revealing it quite yet. Oh, you're not Maybe revealing you know, it. We're okay. not revealing yet, but um, I'll have to wait it's a lot more it. empowering <laughs> and a lot more affirming about the alignment that already lives in us and Very about cool. self-expression and just coming out and just being who you are. Um, 
So let our listeners know. So you, so I'm just going to read the name of your book, Shift, Four Steps to Personal Empowerment. And you said that you are willing to offer a free copy of your book on your website, which is your name, AdeleSpragan.com. How do they find that on your website? Um, So if you just go into the link book, it should be there. The other place you can go, if you can't remember my name, because it's got a bit of a tricky spelling, two Gs. (laughs) Oh, yes. Um, just go to shift number four steps.com. So shift four steps.com. Make sure that's a number and not the word. And there's a link there and they can get a copy of my free book there as well. Awesome. So you, they just have to pay for shipping. You said, right? Just, just pay for shipping. It's actually a physical book though. It's not like it's a e-book. physical book and I'll autograph it. <laughs> Perfect. Well, this has been really enlightening. I've loved this. I love all this whole neural science uh, field and, and how things are emerging. So many more people talking about how we can rewire. And I just, I love your take on it. So thank you for breaking thank that you. down for us. No, oh, thank you for having me. Good reminder for us to not feel powerless when it comes to reprogramming and repatterning our bodies. You know, just kind of being the space of the observer and seeing what might be there and, you know, shining that flashlight into those patterns and noticing them first. I'm a huge fan of just um, letting our body be the guide and holding space. As we mentioned in this episode, when we're in this surrendered space, we're more open. We can get a lot more intuitive and just allowing, allowing the process to just unfold. Such a very powerful somatic release can happen when we are in the space of just allowing and letting it move and work through us. So to me, as I went through this interview with Adele, I was just reminded of how powerful we really are to make those shifts that we desire. And uh, this is a time and season on the earth when all of this great awakening is happening and people are coming back into owning their own bodies and their own minds and recognizing that they are the masters and commanders of their own reality. So have a beautiful week creating, and we'll talk to you next time on Women Seeking Wholeness.